In this video, I'm going to talk about a solution to the midterm two review, review questions. Okay, let's start with the first question. The first question is about the solution to a closed loop uh, system, which is given by uh, uh, given by this uh, block diagram, in which I have a system G sub s uh, input is R sub s, and I have feedback negative unit feedback loop, and the output is Y sub s. So here G sub is, is given by 2s plus 5 divided by s squared plus 3s, 3s plus 1. The first question is to determine the closed loop transfer function y sub s over r sub s. So according to the uh, block diagram, so this is unit negative feedback, so the tr uh, closed loop transfer function is given by just G sub, G sub s divided by 1 plus G of s. By plugging the G sub s, which is defined over here, so we have 2s plus 5 divided by s squared plus 3s plus 1, that's G sub s divided by 1 plus G sub s. So to get a little bit more, uh, a, a, better, a, a, a better form, like a clear form of the actual transfer function, we multiply, multiply both the uh, numerator and denominator by s squared plus 3s plus 1. So then we put them together, so the numerator becomes 2s plus 5 because this one uh, will be cancelled out and then this guy will cancel out this term but there's one more term over here so s squared plus 3s plus 1 plus 2s plus 5 so we get a s squared plus 5s plus 6 so this is a closed loop trans function it's fairly straightforward the second step is to find the time response of y sub t for a unit step input r sub t which is given by 1 so this r sub t is you can sort of consider this R sub t, of course, this is in the time domain. So if you write this one in the S domain, okay, which means is L R sub t, which is in the S domain, we represent by R sub s, capital R sub s, which is just the Laplace transform of 1. So this is my input. And uh, according to the table, you can look at the table. So this is 1 of s. Okay. So the uh, we want to we want to find a y sub t, okay? Before find before we find a y sub t, let's compute what is the y sub s, okay? So y sub s is the input time the transfer function, okay? So the input here uh, r sub s in the s domain is we got over here is one of s transfer function which is computed in the step one, which is two s plus five divided by s squared plus five s plus six, okay? So we can put this as 2s plus 5 as numerator, denominator is s times s squared plus 5 plus 6. I rewrite this one as 2s plus 5, which is the same, and the numerator denominator as s, s plus 2, and s plus 3. I write this one to find the poles because uh, uh, in order to find the, uh, the y sub t, I need to use the inverse Laplace transform. So, inverse Laplace transform, I have to find the poles. Okay? So, if you use the partial fraction expansion, so we have to compute the poles. So the poles, by writing this form, we can have that this y s s has three poles. One is zero. If you set this denominator s s plus two and s plus three, you set to be zero. So you find that this is what the poles define uh, as a solution to this uh, when you set the denominator to be zero. So a pole which poles are zero negative 2 and negative 3. So they are uh, real and distinct. So according to the uh, partial fraction expansion, so this one can be written as, so this guy right here, so this part can be equivalent written as a divided by s plus b divided by s plus 2 plus c divided by s plus 3. Okay, of course you take L inverse, inverse op uh, Laplace transform operation, uh, it still holds. So the key question is how to compute the a and the b and the c's. Okay, according to one, according to what we mentioned for the how to compute the the, the coefficient the a and the b and the c. So a is given by your original function, which is also given by this time s. So this one is s. So this is the same. Okay, you time s and then you left s evaluated as s being zero which is 2s plus 5 divided by s uh, times s plus 2 times s plus 3 times s this s ending up being cancelled out because otherwise it goes to infinity 
Once you do that, you let s to be zero, which is you set s to be zero. So this is a five. This is zero, zero. So it's two times three. So it's a five over six. So similarly for b, what you do is you you keep the y sub s, but you multiply this y by this denominator here. So you multiply it by this, okay? Which is the same. And then you evaluate s equal to negative two, which which means is s plus two is set to be zero, which you get s is negative two. Uh, so so on and so forth. You do the calculation, which will give us negative one half. C, you do the same thing, okay? You do, you put over here. So what you do is you multiply this one by s plus three, and evaluate s being negative three. So after doing calculations, so we have the c is negative one third. Okay. So next step, you just plug in those numbers a and b and c in. So it's y of t is of t uh, according to linear property. So this inverse Laplace transform of these three components together, three components is just uh, the inverse Laplace transform of the three individual components. Okay. So it's L inverse of five over six divided by s. So here I just plug in this a and b and c values. Okay. L inverse 5 over 6 divided by s plus L inverse negative 1 half s plus 2 plus L inverse negative 1 th third divided by s plus 3. Okay, now here from here to here, uh, we just need to use table. Okay, you can find a table to find the inverse Laplace, tra Laplace transform. So this guy will be just 5 over 6. This guy will be negative 1 half e minus 2t plus negative 1, th 1 over 3 e minus 3t. So that's the solution in y of t. Okay. Step 3 is to determine the steady state value of uh, y of t, meaning that I want to compute what is the limit of y of t as t goes to infinity. Since we already computed the actual value of y of t over here, so just take the limit. So limit of y of t as t goes to infinity is just individual components. You take the limit, assuming that the limit exists, of course. So the limit of this guy is 5 over 6 plus negative 1 half e minus 2t plus negative 1 over 3 e to the minus 3t. So we take the limit for individual components is limit of t equal to infinity of 5 over 6 plus limit of t to infinity for the second term. Okay. And then third term over here. So if we take a look at this limit, so the first one because constant the limit will be itself 5 over 6. The second and third limit will be 0 because this guy goes to 0. This guy goes to zero, okay. As t goes to infinity, so this one becomes five over six plus zero plus zero, which is five over six. The last step is to compute the limit of y sub t, i s of t minus y sub t as t goes to infinity, which is just straightforward. You take a limit of individual component limit of y s of t minus limit of y sub t. Limit of this guy is computed here, and this guy is constant. We know it's step input, unit step input, right? So it's just one. Minus this limit is 5 over 6, so it's 1 over 6. Okay, so that's the, for the last step. Okay, for the, let's go back to go to the second question. Okay, second question is about uh, checking the stability of the following uh, system given a transfer function and by using the Rouse Horowitz criterion. Okay, so um, I have three uh, problems that I want to check stability. One is the first one is s minus 1 divided by s. To the cube plus 2s squared plus minus 2s plus 1. The second one is s minus 1 divided by s to the cube plus s squared plus 2s plus 2. And the last one is given by this. Okay, let's start with one by one. So, first one, we know for the Ralph's Hurley criterion, which one of the conditions says all coefficients should have the same. Sign. Uh, often in the denominator, in the uh, in the I mean here, what I mean here is s cubed plus two s squared minus two s plus one. So for all of the denominators, coefficient when I mean coefficient, I means all the numbers in front of s to certain power. S two cube because this is you can see as a one time that's one. So I have coefficient is one and two s to the square, so I have a coefficient which is 2, and s, I have coefficient negative 2, and the constant value s2, you can see this as s to the 0, right? So I have coefficient which is 1. So all those coefficients must have the same sign. This is what the Ralph Horowitz criterion, one of the conditions says. So if they have a different sign, 
so they must be unstable. So if you check the coefficients, this is 1, 2, negative 2, 1. So there's a change of sign, they're not consistent, they're not the same, So, which means not a stable, okay, for this case. So you don't have to use run this uh, 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 the, the, the table of right score criteria, you check the last array. You don't have to compute that because you can use a, the property to directly tell if it's stable or not. So this is a property. Of course, even if the coefficients are uh, share the same sign, we need to go to use the, uh, what do we talk about for the third, second, third. We do need to check the computed Russell array to check if it's the first column of the Russell array have the same sign. Okay, so now, now let's move to the second and third cases. For the second case, I have this one. So for this one, I don't care about the numerator, basically. I just need to care about the denominator. So to calculate Russell array, so you first draw a horizontal line and vertical line. And then you have a, a number of rows, basically. So, so the rows for each row, you start with the highest power of this s. Here is s to the cube. Then reduce by one by when you move down, uh, move one arrow uh, arrow down. So s to the square, s to the one, s to the zero. So you basically have four rows. Okay. So then the first two rows, you just plug in those numbers from the coefficients. So your basic coefficient that we have is. 1 time s squared and 1 time s, this is the coefficients, 3 times s plus 2. So I have 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 3, 2. Of course, I can put 0, 0 over there, okay, if I need to. So that's how I compute the first, how I compute the first two rows. And this guy, for these numbers, uh, uh, the remaining rows over here, we have to use the, the property called uh, cross back, cross back. If you do, I'll just give one example. This number, how you compute that? First, you find a one right above it, which is one. Okay, right above it, you do cross. First cross is do product back is a minus. You go to one, one cross again, cross two, and back last back is divide by one. Okay, so this is a three minus one divide by one. So this is ending up being one. You can also check this number. Okay, this number, how to compute that? You find right, the one right above it is two, okay? You do two cross, so cross back, cross back. So cross two, cross zero, minus three, cross zero. This is cross back zero, and divide by two, so this is just zero. Okay, similarly, you can do the same sign. You do the, the entry right above it, do cross back, cross back. Okay, so you're gonna end up getting two. So if you look at this one, you have the, this is a complete structure, it's called a Russell array. We only need to check the first column of the Russell array. It's right over here. I, I, uh, I use a block over here. So this is, a, check the first, and the first column is a 1, 1, 1, 2. So they have the same sign, they're all positive, right? So same sign, so this is stable, okay? So let's look, look at the third example. So I still have the same, almost same structure. Uh, I have built the same structure as I mentioned over here, so I built the four rows over here. So I put it, first I put in all the numbers from coefficient of the denominator, which is 1, 1, 2, as 1 times s squared, s cubed, plus 1 times s squared, plus 2 s plus 5, so it's a 1, 1, 2, 5, 0, 0, okay? So this number is calculated by doing what? By doing this, okay? So this number is calculated from this so is you check the number right above it is the one cross two is cross goes two back is minus cross uh, one cross five one cross five and you divide by one so this give us is negative three that's why it's negative three so actually I don't have to compute any further because I know this already there's a change of sign this is because I only need to check if the first column have the same sign because it is a one one and negative three already so this change the sign because it doesn't have the same sign so change the signs which means uh, it's not stable okay so this is the basic uh, idea how we use the Ross Corey criterion to check the stability of a, of a system uh, which is represented by a, a transfer function okay. okay so question number three so uh, it's still about the stability of uh, of uh, uh, a given system, control system with a given transfer function. So other than checking the stability, we also want to know how many poles are on the right half plane. Okay, this Ralph's criterion can also tell how many poles are on the right half plane. Okay, 
Let's go back to the example. So the, uh, the, uh, the steps are pretty similar as the previous one. So this is just a little bit more complex because the highest power adds to the force, okay? So again, I'm gonna put the horizontal line and vertical line over here. So right up on the left of the horizontal line, I have to the, I start with the highest power I have from, from the denominator, which is as to the force. Then reduce one power by uh, power by one and down one 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 row. So I have S force, S3, S2, S1, S0, okay? So I now find the coefficients. For all these coefficients is one. It's one, two, four, seven, uh, three. So it's one, two, four, seven, three. Of course, I can put a zero over there, okay? Once I do that, I can calculate all the numbers as I mentioned from the previous step. You use the, uh, the, uh, the property is cross, back, cross, back. This is rule we use. Cross, this is the product. This is a minus. This is product. This is a division. Divide by something. Okay, so it's a, you find the one right above it. You start from there, you do cross product minus one cross seven and divide by two. Okay, so I don't want to compute all the steps, but if you follow the the procedure, you get is a one half three zero for the third row, and then it's negative five zero, then it's three. Okay. So first of all, we check if the first column of the last array change sign. So this is the first column last array. So it, it does change sign. So we, we can say this is not stable. And also how many of the poles on the right half plane? So the number of one of the, uh, one of the, um, one of the conclusion in the last array criterion says the number of sign change, change is number of poles on the right half plane, basically. Okay. So you want to check how many times does the first column change sign? Yeah. Does the first column, the last rate change sign? So if you check that one, so the one to from this to one to two doesn't change sign. It's all, all positive. From two to one is also uh, one to two to one half is still positive. It doesn't change sign. From one half to negative five, yes, there's a change sign because from positive to negative. From negative five to three, uh, there's a change sign because to, from negative positive. So there's two change of sign over here, which you may have two poles on the right half plane. Okay, so this one, in order to check how many poles on the right half plane, you do need to have compute the entire RAS array because we have to check how many uh, times uh, does the first column change sign. That will determine how many poles on the right half plane. Okay. Okay, so the fourth question is about uh, you know, using Ross Hurry criterion to check the stability of system, uh, especially to determine the range of an unknown parameter, such as the system is stable. Okay. Um, so the only difference between this problem and the previous problem, we have some parameters like over here, which is unknown, which is undetermined. We want to determine the range of this value such that the system is stable. You basically can tell the main idea is I want to check still build my Ross array. Of course, some of the, uh, the component may be uh, include this unknown variable. And we just want to select this unknown variable in a way that the first column of my raspberry does not change sign. Okay. So um, let's go back to the question. So I give this g of s, which is 1 over s, 2s to the fourth plus 2s to the q plus ks squared plus s plus 1. So like I mentioned before, we still build the raspberry, okay, vertical line, horizontal line and vertical line. And um, to the left of the uh, vertical line, I put all the uh, s to the fourth, a zero to s to the third different powers reduced by one uh, from each column, each row. So starting with the highest power, s to the fourth, and then reduce one uh, order by one down by one column, one row. So s fourth, s three, s two, s one, s zero, pretty straightforward. Then we put all the coefficient numbers in. So it's we have two, two, k, one. This is you can see that here is a one. 2, 2, K, 1, 1. So it's 2, 2, K, 1, 1. Uh, remember the sequence? You have to put the, this order. So like you put the first number, coefficient here, you down by 1, then it's here, then here, then here, then here. So it's going down. The basic sequence is going down. And cross, 
down, cross down. This is the way you fill in the first two uh, rows, basically. Okay. So after doing that, you follow exactly what I mentioned before to compute this uh, this route. All the following uh, rows is like set cross, back, cross, back. Okay, so you don't want to compute this number, you just follow the steps I mentioned over there. And without going into the detail of the computation, so what I end up having here is I have k minus 1, 1, 0, that's the third row, and fourth row is k minus 3 divided by k minus 1, 0, the last one is 1. Okay, so because the, the, the system is stable if the first column does not change sign, which means the first column shouldn't change sign. I should select k such as the first column doesn't change the sign, okay? So if I extract the first column in my raster array, so I get here is 2 and 2, so 2, 2, k minus 1, k minus 3 divided by k minus 1, and 1, okay? So what's what I have for the column, okay? So this, here this is positive, okay? This is positive, 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 of course this two must be positive, it's not, any of them is not positive, there's a change of sign, at least one change of sign, okay? So I want to make sure this k plus, so this is positive, which means k minus 1 is positive, okay, which means k should be greater than 1. And also I have k minus 3 divided by k minus 1 must be positive. So here, because k must be positive greater than 1, so I can ignore the denominator, so which means k minus 3 must be positive, so k must be greater than 3. So if you combine k, this two, k minus must be greater than 1, and k must be greater than 3, so the combination says k must be greater than 3. So the as long as I select k to be greater than 3, so the system is stable. Okay. Because if k is greater than 3, I know this guy will be positive. Yeah, because k minus 1, k is greater than of course it's positive. And k minus 3 divided by k minus this is also positive. That's why then we can say the first column of my raster array does not change sign. So the system is stable. Oh, okay, let's go to question number five. The question number five is uh, basically uh, it's about a rook locus, okay? To compute it, you know, for a given uh, system, probably it's given given a standard form uh, format or not. Or not. And we want to figure out how does uh, how the roots or the poles change when the parameters of k, some parameters, move from zero to infinity. So that's the uh, uh, what root locus is about. So this is the question. This start with the question number five. So the, it, here we're giving a control system, which is a, a unit negative feedback, and with uh, this g sub s over here is given by s plus one divided by s time s minus two time s minus three. Okay, and so of course I have here I have a GCS. GCS means is some of the controller we might design. Okay, it can be a K. It can be some more complex one. Okay, this will determine how we draw the rule locus. Okay, so the first question says, let's say GCS is K. Okay, let's say this is K over here. So this is a standard form. This is standard form. When GCS is K, this is standard root locus. Uh, the the uh, structure we want to have to draw the rule locus. We can just use the a 10 rules I mentioned uh, in previous lectures to draw a locus. Okay, so first question is, let's say GCS is K, uh, I want to show you how many lines are located in the plot of the rule locus, and what are the starting and ending locations of the lines. Uh, also, mention here state, inf state infinity if needed, because maybe it's, it's a starting ending point, maybe infinity, okay? So let's go back to some rule, review some rule to see what rule do we use to, to solve this question, okay? So first of all, how many lines are located in the plot of rule locus, okay? The rule number one says the, the number of lines located is determined by the number of poles of G sub S, or the number of the zeros of G sub S, whichever is greater, okay? Remember here, G sub S is exactly what I mean here, G sub S over here, okay? So right over here, okay? So G sub, here, G sub is given by s plus 1 divided by s, s minus 2 times s minus 3. So we can compute the number of zeros and number of poles. So the number of zeros is computed by you setting the numerator to be 0, okay? You find a solution, how many solutions can you find, okay? So here I can only find one solution, so which means the number of zeros is just 1. The, the number of poles, you set a denominator, 
denominator to be zero, okay, which is right over here. You set denominator to be zero. Now you have the pole. You find a solution. The solution are s is zero, s is two, and s three. So we have three poles. So the number pole is three. The rule number one said. The line number of lines are located determined by either the number of poles or the number of zeros, depending on which one which one is greater. Of course, this is greater because it's three greater than one. So, which means I have three lines. Okay. The second question: What are the starting and ending locations of the line? Okay. So, the rule number two says the lines always start with the, the open loop poles, which means it's g at the the poles of g sub s, and end at the open loop zeros, which is which means the zeros of G sub S, which means the lines always start with the poles of G sub S and the and, and and zeros of G sub S. This is what it means. Of course here I don't have the same number of zeros and poles. So the num rule number seven says if there are not enough zeros and poles to make a pair, which means they do not have the same number of zeros and poles over here, the extra lines will go to or come from infinity. Okay? So if I don't have enough zeros, this zero will be infinity. If I don't have enough poles, the poles will be infinity, right? So because the starting with the poles, I know the starting location pole exactly. So because three of them, uh, which is zero, two, and three, okay? And the so any locations are, of course I know one of them should be zero because I already computed it, so it's the end at zero, right? Which is negative one. I don't have the same number, don't make a pair, because they must come as a pair, right? I don't have the other two. So I must have two go to infinity because according to here, I have to make a pair. So extra one, the extra line will go to infinity. That's why I have any location are negative one, infinity, infinity. So here I don't say this one and this one making a pair. It may be this zero go to infinity, this three go to infinity, and two go to negative one, or maybe even three go to negative one. I don't know which one go to, but at least I know the starting location should be this three, and ending location should be negative one of infinity infinity. Okay, to get a more idea, clear idea about which one will go to where and what the the line looks like, we have to sketch the real locus, which is in step two, which says when GCS is k, we will sketch the real locus. We're gonna see how the 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 the, the pole the system change as k moves from zero to infinity. Okay, so here I'm going to ref so you may want to refer to the previous lectures talking about the rule locus. I have three videos on this one, so you can check those one for the ten rules. But I want to go highlight this key rules I'm used I'm using to uh, sketch the rule locus for this example. Okay, this probably is is true for many of the rule locus uh, when we want to plug rule locus. You can follow the same idea, similar idea as I do over here. So first of all, I draw the real line and vertical line. Okay, imagine a line. Okay, so the step one is you want to compute the pole and the zeros of G sub s, the open loop one. So actually, I already computed over here, which is the zero is negative one, pole is zero, two, and three. Okay, if I draw it over here, I compute already from the press step, so I don't compute over here. If you don't, you can compute that one. Step two is to use the rule number five to determine, and then of course the 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 with the step one also means I need to draw this zero and pose on the on the on the real real axis of the imaginary axis I part of I, I did over here. So what I did what I did over here I first draw I also want to say computer and draw okay pose and zeros of G sub s. So there are three poles which is zero, two and three. I draw it over here. And I have one zero, so zero I draw over here is this. Okay, so I draw it over here. Okay. Step two is use the rule number five to determine the part of real of the x-axis that is part of Loki. Okay. To do that, I need to label those zero and poles from the left, from the right to left. So this is the first one, this is the second one, this is the third one, this is the fourth one. I label it. The rule number five says to the to the uh, left of the odd number of the of the polar rows, poles, poles and uh, zeros will be part of Loki. So this is to the left of number one, this is number one to the odd number, left of this one, okay. Until reach here, you should stop here because this is to the left of the even one, okay. So this is part of Loki. Similarly, between three and four, this is to the left of the odd number, which is three, it's part of Loki. I draw that one out. This is what just what step two says, okay. 
The step three is use the rule number eight to determine the centroid angle of those lines go to infinity. Okay. So first of all, how many lines go to infinity? This is determined by the number of poles num minus the number of zeros. Okay. This is what what do we have? So number of poles is three, right? So this is three, and number of zeros is one. So we have two lines go to infinity because n minus m is two, and we have to compute the angle and centroid angles and centroids. So angle is determined by, I have, to, I have to have two angles basically. The centroid will be just one. The angle, the overall, um, overall uh, the, the formula we use to compute the angles are given by this. Phi A is 2Q plus 1, M minus M times 180. So this Q has to be started from 0 to 1 until N minus M minus 1. So N minus M is 2 and N minus 1 is 1. So you have to you have to uh, label, you find out all the integer numbers starting from 0 and n at 1. Of course, you want to have two numbers, 0 and 1. Okay, 0 and 1, okay. So there are two angles, you for q is 0, you compute 1. So if q is 1, you compute 1 angle. That's why I compute two angles. I don't want to compute this over here, this can be very uh, straightforward. So two angles are 90 and uh, 270 degrees. The centroid is computed by, uh, compute the sum of the poles minus sum of 0 divided by MSM. So n minus m is just by 2, we already got it. So poles, I have 3 poles, 0, 2, and 3. You compute the sum, which is 0 plus 2 plus 3. Minus zeros, zeros, you only have 1 zero, it's negative 1, so it's minus, minus 1. So you have 2 plus 3 is uh, 5, 5 plus 1 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Okay, so I draw it over here. So I have, a, if I draw over here, what I draw over here is the centroid will be just 3 over here, right over here, on this, uh, uh, um, this pole and one is going up 90 degrees one going down is 270 degrees this is centroid okay or draw it over there okay so then what you do is you know you can draw this line this is just start from here as I've mentioned in the uh, the here rule number two says lines should start with an open loop pose and an open loop zero so you, one of them should start from here anywhere here this is one of the line the other one here, because we know they will go, they need to go to infinity along this line, right? They should approach this, uh, this uh, asymptotes, basically, right? So which means they must split. Of course, we don't know where the, where they split. And also, we have a rule saying that they must uh, play, uh, appear at a complex conjugate pair, which means they should be symmetric along this real axis. So we should know they split at certain point. Then start one of them will go up and start approach this asymptotes. And one of them is going down, uh, approaches the symptom going down over there. So what the heck is going to happen is one of them is going here and go up, and one of them going here and go down. Okay. Of course, you can say this guy go down, this guy go up, or this guy go down, this guy up. It doesn't really matter. It's, it means the same thing. Okay. Of course, the splitting point, we typically don't have to compute it directly because that's the the reason we, we sketch a real locus is to get an idea about how the poles will 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 change as k moves from 0 to infinity. We do, now we already have a good idea about what the the pose will move as k moves from 0 to infinity. Okay? So that's completely the, the plot of rural locus. Okay? The third question is when GCS's k shows that the system is always unstable. Okay? It's because we know the system is stable if the pose are in the open left half plane, okay, this is a stable, the condition, the stable system, the condition says the pose must be in the open left half plane, right? So, if we can use the rule locus to, det to determine if the system is stable, okay, if I look at this one rule locus, so the pose, I have a three pose, basically, one here, one here, one here, we want to see as k moves from zero to infinity, does this possible that the, at for certain k, the pose are all in the open left half plane? So if you look at this one, so this guy, yeah, this guy become negative. Great. Okay. However, we know this guy, this guy is split and going up, or going up, it never, it never go to the left half plane. Alpha means this is a left half plane. Okay. On the left of the imagined axis, that's the left half plane. This is not. Which means that two poles are always on the right half plane. Okay. That's why it's not stable. So I said over here, so according to the rule in the step two, there are always two poles that are in the open left hand. Doesn't matter what k we have. 
so the system is unstable. Okay? So the last part says when GCS, so here we make a change, we don't use the, the, the control just given by K, now we change the, the control being uh, as K times S plus 2. So which is, is sort of the PD control, if we consider this is a PD control. There's a K times S plus 2. We want to sketch the root locus and also determine the range of K such as the system is stable. So first of all, we draw the plus root locus. So here, to do the draw locus, we know we need to have write it in the standard form. The standard format says, I must have written this as a unit negative feedback, and only this one appear K, only K appear here. And all other parts should appear in my, this is my G, new G sub S over here. And so uh, basically I want to absorb this S plus 2 into this original one, the, the G sub S, which is the S plus 2, 1 divided by S times S minus 2 times S minus 3. Okay? So eventually I have a new G sub S given by this, and then I only left, the one left is K over here. So this one, now I can use this one minus my new G sub S, and this is standard form, so I can use the 10 rule as I mentioned in the, in the previous three videos. Okay, so the steps will be the same as I mentioned in the, in the, in the step B. Okay, let's see, in the step B, over here you follow the same step as I mentioned. So first one, what I do is, okay, just briefly talk about it. So first of all, I want to draw all the zero in the pose. The pose does not change for the G sub S, still from 0 and 2 and 3 so there are two zeros I draw over here one is 1 and one is 2 uh, negative 1 one is negative 2 okay all right so the second one I have to determine the real axis that is part of low key the part of real axis is part of low key so first I label it this all this zero in the pose according to the from the right to left so I have a 1 2 3 and 4 and 5 okay according to zero in the pose so first of all, in between this, yes, I know it's part of low key, okay, because it's to left of number one, to left between three and four. This is to left of number three, okay. This is to left and left. So this one go through all the way to the infinity will be part of low key. We know that, okay. Once we do that, we want to see. Of course, I want to compute the the how many poles, how many lines go to infinity. So n minus m, okay. So here n, I have how many poles. So for this new G sub, this is n is three because I have a, I set the, the denominator to be zero. I have a solution that s is zero, s is two, s is three. So I have three solutions n is three. And now here is two. It's not a one anymore because I have two solutions. If I set s plus one, s two plus two set to be zero. I have two solutions. S is negative one, s negative two. So here I have a n minus m is just given by one. So I only have one line go to infinity. Of course, you can compute the centroid, so the angle, the phi sub a, you have that one, so one angle is 2q plus 1 divided by n minus m times 180. So here, the q is started from 0 to until n minus 1 minus n minus m minus 1, from 0 to 0. So only value is q should be 0, right? So if you put a 0 over here, it is uh, 2 times 0 plus 1. Uh, is still 1. 1 divided by n minus 1, n minus also 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. 1 times 180 is 180 degrees. Okay. The centroid is the sum of zeros minus sum of the poles. The sum of zero the pole, the sum of the poles, sorry, sum of the poles minus sum of zeros divided by n minus m. So the sum of the poles is 0 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3. This is 5. Okay, this guy is negative 3, so minus negative 3 is 8, so this becomes 8, so the central is 8, so actually it doesn't matter, so it starts somewhere, maybe 8, it's a little bit far away, but it doesn't really matter where it starts from A, and you go to negative infinity, you, you're going to approach, you're basically going to approach this line, you brought, you brought, because of 180 degrees, so start from this negative 8, for example, you go into this, this is your, is the asymptotes, this whole line, you go, keep on going, so your line will gradually approach this uh, line, okay, the so gradual going to approach this line, okay? So if I draw over here, let's see what's going to happen. So because uh, the, 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 each line and the low key, the, the low key will, each line will start from the pose and zero. So this is one of line, we already know that. 
And for this guy, because we know starting from the poles but ending at the zeros are all infinity. Now because this guy, you must bleed, otherwise you cannot end at zero. Because you, you have one pair should be like this, and the other one will go to infinity, as we mentioned. So we must have this one split, and then start to merge at this line, and then go back over here, go to this zero. The other one going to here, go still do this way, this one has to be symmetrical, of course. And this guy line directly go to infinity because we know this real this real this all the lines should uh, to the left of this line this point must be part of Loki, so I know this line must go here and all the way go to infinity, which is match exactly what I want to say because this, we know this uh, asymptotes will approach this uh, one eighty degrees and right because it is exact match once it go here it gonna approach it gonna be the same as the asymptote that I computed over here. Going to next infinity, okay? So that's why this must split. And then go here, and one of them we go to zero because I know according to rule number two, the line must starting with a pose and ending at the zeros. Or if it doesn't have enough, so we'll start it from pose and then go to infinity. Of course, it should cover the real axis because the real axis must be part of Loki. Okay, this will go to negative infinity, all the way negative infinity. Okay. So one thing we can see from here that of course let's say you want your k this is how uh, how the pole will change. So for this pole it will as k increase you're going to move to this point. Okay, which means as long as k greater than zero, this pole will become negative, will be in the open left half plane. Now for these two poles at first they're gonna merge, they're gonna go to the same value and then one of them go up, one of them go down, and then at a certain point they will cross the imagined axis and move to the left hand side. Okay. As we can see from here, when k is big enough for some value, this guy will become will become stable. At least from what we say, what we see from rule locus. Okay, so last question is to compute the range of k such that the system is stable. Okay, so here we use uh, to get exactly value. We know here k should be greater than something, of course, right? To know the exact value, what a lower bound for k, we sort of use the ras Perry's criterion again to determine the range of k. Okay, to do that, we first compute the closed loop trans function, which is yss divided by u sub s, which is if I use the original one, so compute the closed loop trans function, we have a cascade and we use a feedback loop, right? Cascade means these two together is just k times this whole thing, right? This is k times the whole thing, and then the unit negative feedback, which is given by divided by one plus this is unit negative feedback. So this cascade. And unit negative, then unit negative feedback. This is the trans function. So by doing some calculation, so basically what we do is we multiply multiply, multiply both the numerator denominator by s s minus two and then minus three. Okay, this one I also multiply this by s s minus two s minus three. So by cleaning up a little bit, so I get the denominator numerator being given as k times s plus one times s plus two. And denominator will be given by s to the cube plus k minus 5 s squared plus 3k plus 6 times s plus 2k. Just clean a little bit. Now we can use uh, the Ross Hurst criterion. So the same procedure I mentioned in the, in the previous question, the question number 2, number 3, number 4. Uh, I have all the same procedure. So we basically want to uh, put a horizontal line and vertical line. And I put the highest order over here, which is S3, S2, S1, S0, okay? Then I have to put in the coefficients. So coefficients are, this is, a, you can see this is a 1 over here. So I have coefficients 1, k okay, minus 5, 3k plus 6, and 2k. That's why I put over here. So 1, k minus 5, 3k plus 6, 2k, and 0, 0 over here. So, and I use the same rule I mentioned before, is cross back cross back to compute the last two rows. So this guy is given, so this entry, to give examples for this entry is a complicated one. This is just, you find a one right above it, it's k minus five, cross, cross means cross back, cross back. So it's cross is three k plus six, so this product back is a minus, one cross two k, one side is two k basically. And back to divide by k minus five. Okay, this is what what we have over here. So this guy do the same thing. Cross back, cross back. This gives zero. This guy do again. 
cross back, cross back, so get a 2K. So get it first, uh, I computed the, the completed rough array over here. So to make sure the system is stable, I must have the first column of my rough array does not change sign. So my first column, if I put it out, the first column is 1, K minus 5, K minus 5, 3K plus 6, minus 2K, divide by K minus 5, okay, and also 2K. Okay, this must not change sign. So this is already positive, right? This is a positive already. So then all these numbers must be positive, basically. So I have here, first one, K minus 5, this guy positive means K minus 5 is positive, so K must be greater than 5, okay? Now I go to the second one. Because K, I also have this one, the second one, the third one, this whole thing is positive, this guy is positive. So this guy is, the last one, 2K is positive, means K is greater than 0, because this K is already greater than 5, so I, just, I can just ignore this one. As long as I can make K greater than 5, this one is already positive, so I, have, I can ignore this. And also I can ignore the denominator over here because this is once k is greater than 5, this is already positive. I can just delete it. So what we have here is as long as this guy, the numerator here is positive, because this is positive, so positive by positive is still positive, and this one is not positive. When k is greater than 5 over here, as long as I have additional uh, condition, which is k minus 5 plus 3k uh, plus 6, times 3k plus 6 minus 2k is positive, which is the numerator for the second equality. If this is positive, I know this is positive, this is positive, and this is positive, which means the first uh, column of my trust really does not change sign. Okay, if I clear this one a little bit, so this one can be written as uh, 3k squared minus 11k minus 30 is positive. As long as it's positive, then uh, my, uh, my, uh, the first column will not change sign. Okay. So there are two conditions. If I draw 3k squared minus 11k minus 30, it's somehow like this for different k. You go in up and I go down and go up. So we should, you have two sort of solutions. Either you are smaller than something or you're greater than something. Okay? So first of all, either you are k greater than 11 plus, this is I use, uh, uh, it's quite a standard. It's k divide, if it's k greater than this 11 plus, square root of 11 squared plus 4 times 3 is a, is if I consider this the A, this is the B, and this is C. So this is a K greater than two A uh, minus B plus B squared minus four A times C. So that if it's great either is K less than uh, minus B minus square root of B squared minus four A C divided by two A. Okay, either this is a, this one. So A is three. This is a three. And B is negative 11, and C is negative 30. So that's the, the, the condition for any B and for K. So either K is greater than 11 plus square root of 11 square minus 4 times 3 times negative 30 divided by 6, okay? Or K is less than or equal to 11 minus 11 square minus 4 uh, times 3 times negative 30 and divided by 6, okay? Because this one is negative, you know it's negative because it's plus and plus. So this will be greater than 11. So 11 minus greater than is negative. Negative minus 6 is negative. So this means k minus, he's smaller than something, right? Because I already have, this is k minus greater than 5, right? k cannot be negative, right? Which means I can ignore the second one, because it can be ignored, because this cannot happen. Uh, this cannot be true. We cannot select this range of k less than some negative value, because I must have k greater than 5 over here. So I can ignore this one, so I have to just make sure the first condition is satisfied. So k greater than 11 plus square root of 11 square root plus 4 times 3 times negative 30 divided by 6. If I compute this value is 5.4886, which is greater than 5. This is, if this combined with k greater than 5, k greater than 5, so yeah, of course, as long as, so my, this condition require k is greater than 5, and this guy requires k is greater than 5, probably require k is greater than 5.4886. So putting them together means k has to be greater than 5.4886. So in other words, if we go back to this original question right here, so the system is stable if k 
pay is greater than 5.4888. So which is, con is is consistent with we, what we observed. We know here at a certain point, once it crosses the imagined axis for a certain k, so which means you are here, uh, let's draw a little bit. So when you are here, so this is when k is equal to 5.4886. Of course, this is also k is 5.4. 4886. Okay, once you go beyond this point, as long as you increase beyond that, you will always be negative. Your po all poles will be always in the open left half plane. Okay, so that's all the solutions to the uh, to the midterm two review questions.